Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. What you think becomes your reality. Earl Nightingale, in his audio program, The Strangest Secret, says that you become what you think about. Ralph Waldo Emerson summarized this idea more than a hundred years before by saying, a man becomes what he thinks about most of the time. The law of mind is extremely powerful and is in many ways a basic law for explaining many of the other laws that refer to mind action. The natural extension of the law of mind is the third law of success called the law of mental equivalency. This law says that your primary responsibility to yourself is to create a clear and accurate mental equivalent of what you wish to experience in each dimension of your external life. If you want to be happy, you need to clearly define for yourself and create the mental equivalent or picture of exactly what happiness means to you. If you wish to enjoy health and long life or happy relationships or financial prosperity, you need to create in your mind an exact detailed picture of what you desire. As a result of a whole series of other laws that I'll be discussing, this becomes the critical starting point that begins inevitably to lead you to the realization of your dreams and goals. The fourth law of success is called the law of correspondence. This law has been talked about for perhaps 4,000 years and it's one of the fundamental laws that explains human experience. It simply says that as within, so without. It says that your outer life will tend to be a mirror image of your inner life. Your external world will tend to correspond almost exactly to what is going on inside both your conscious and subconscious minds. There are four major areas where you see the law of correspondence working all the time. The first is simply in your attitude. Whatever your attitude is, often before you even say anything, people will reflect it back to you in the way they talk to you and treat you. As within, so without. The second area where the law of correspondence is evident is in your relationships. Your relationships will almost perfectly mirror your attitude and your personality. If you're a good and happy person, you'll have good and happy relationships. As you become a more patient and tolerant and loving person, your relationships will reflect this almost immediately, very much as a mirror will do. The third area of correspondence that you see is in your health. Much of your health can be directly traced to specific attitudes that cause you to suffer from minor and major illnesses. The extensive work that's been done in the area of holistic medicine seems to suggest that there are corresponding attitudes of mind for most illnesses that you or I suffer, from the common cold and flu all the way up to the most serious illnesses that are often life-threatening. Whenever you're anxious or upset or unhappy for any reason, for any period of time, your body will begin to reflect those feelings. The entire basis of psychosomatic medicine is the conclusion that your mind, psycho, makes your body, soma, sick. What your mind harbors, your body eventually expresses. The fourth application of the law of correspondence is that your external world of material accomplishment will exactly correspond to your internal world of preparation. The more knowledge and skill you gain that helps you to be more effective in your work, the more you will be paid. You can't hope to acquire or achieve anything more on the outside until you've acquired it or achieved it on the inside. The law of correspondence reigns supreme. The fifth law of success is the law of belief, which says that whatever you believe with emotion becomes your reality. You always have a tendency to act in a manner consistent with your innermost beliefs and convictions. Your beliefs, in fact, act like a filter or a screen that edit out incoming information and only allows into your conscious awareness the things that you've already decided are true about yourself and the world. William James of Harvard said, Belief creates the actual fact. In the Bible it says, Whatsoever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For example, if you absolutely believe that you are meant to be a great success in life and that no matter what happens, nothing can stop you from achieving the greatness that is yours, you'll act in a manner consistent with that belief and you'll eventually make it come true. If you doubt your ability to be successful for any reason, 
this negative belief will be demonstrated in your tendency to hold yourself back. The most important part of the law of belief is the necessity for you to question your own self-limiting beliefs. These are the beliefs that act like the brakes on your potential. These are the nagging doubts and fears that people have about themselves and their abilities that cause them to sell themselves short. When you have self-limiting beliefs, you have a tendency to settle for far less than you may be capable of. Self-limiting beliefs revolve around your ability to lose weight or quit smoking or earn a certain amount of money or be attractive to members of the opposite sex or develop new abilities that are more conducive to your success and happiness. One of the most important steps you can take toward achieving great success is for you to question these self-limiting beliefs. You might even ask others who know you well what self-limiting beliefs they seem to think that you have that may be holding you back. Remember, self-limiting beliefs are often used as excuses. A good way to test your self-limiting beliefs is to ask yourself whether anyone else with the limitations you perceive you have has nonetheless gone on to achieve success. You can also look at your own actions to decide what it is that you truly value. Remember, it's not what you say or hope or wish or intend that is a true expression of your values and beliefs. It's only what you do. Children are very aware of this and they ignore the advice of their parents when their parents say, do as I say, not as I do. The fact is, we all seem to know that a person's actions are the true reflection of their innermost convictions. There's a great deal of confusion and unhappiness in the world today because many people feel that if they say something emphatically enough or write about it, it means that they truly believe it. But this is false. You only truly believe what you do. Your actions do speak far more loudly than your words. For example, if you truly believe in the values of persistence and dedication, it'll be evident in the things that you do every single day. If you truly believe in the values of honesty and integrity and self-discipline, you'll demonstrate these qualities in your every behavior. In fact, you can tell what a person values by looking at what they did in the past when the pressure was on. It's only when you're forced to make a choice that you know what it is you really value. For example, when you have to choose between family and work or between money and honesty, your true values come out. The wonderful and important thing about your values is that you can develop them in yourself by disciplining yourself to act consistent with them, even if you haven't yet made them a fixed part of your character. I'll explain this later in the program. The seventh law of success is the law of motivation, which says that everything you do is triggered by inner desires and urges and instincts, many of which may be at an unconscious level, and your attitudes and behaviors will be determined by your dominant motivations, by what you really want and need in life, not by what you think you want. This is an extension of the law of values, and it's very important for you to understand. There's a simple formula called the ABC formula of human motivation and human action. The ABC stands for antecedents, behavior, and consequences. The antecedents are the things that happen before the behavior. The behaviors are the things you do. The consequences are what happens as a result of your behavior. We know that psychologically only about 15% of your motivation comes from the antecedents, from what you read or learn or are told to do or not do. However, about 85% of your motivation comes from your expectations, what you think will happen. It's your beliefs about the consequences, about the future, that causes you to behave in a certain way. The clearer you are about the consequences of your actions, and the more intensely you desire to enjoy the consequences that your behaviors may lead to, the more motivated you'll be. This is why it's so important to have absolute clarity with regard to your goals in each area of your life in order for you to be motivated to perform at your very best. An important point with regard to the ABC formula is that your behaviors are not guaranteed to achieve the consequences that you desire. But every behavior or action that you engage in will generate a consequence of some kind. One of the most important parts of understanding motivation and behavior is to realize that both 
actions and inactions have consequences. What you do, as well as what you fail to do, will have a consequence in your future, and sometimes the consequences can be dramatic and long-lasting. A good exercise in success is for you to write out a description of the type of person that you'd like to be and the kind of life that you'd like to be living. The most powerful faculty that you have is your ability to think, your ability to understand. The more accurately you can think about who you are and what you want to accomplish and how to accomplish it, the more effective and successful you will be. The eighth law of success is the law of subconscious activity, and it has several applications. The first part of this law is that whatever thought or idea mixed with emotion you hold in your conscious mind will be accepted as a command by your subconscious mind. This means that whatever thought, idea, or goal you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis you can have because your subconscious mind will go to work to organize all of your thoughts and actions to bring it into your reality. If you desire to earn or attain a certain amount of money and you think about it continually day and night and you use every means possible to drive this desire or hope deep into your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind will begin committing more and more of its reserve capacity toward bringing that goal or desire into your life. The second part of the law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind, once you give it the proper commands, will trigger your reticular cortex and its function, the reticular activating system. Your reticular cortex is a small, finger-like part of your brain that alerts you to events and circumstances around you that are consistent with your dominant desires or concerns. For example, if you decided that you wanted to buy a red sports car, this desire would signal to your reticular cortex that red sports cars are now of paramount importance to you. From that moment on, you would see red sports cars everywhere, even a block away. You would become extremely alert and sensitive to red sports cars as well as to the means of attaining one of them. If one of your goals is to achieve financial independence and you imbue this goal with intense desire, your reticular cortex will cause you to be extremely sensitive to all kinds of opportunities around you that would help you to earn more money. You would hear and see things everywhere that you might have been unaware of completely in the absence of having established this goal and planted it in your subconscious mind. The third part of the law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind, which controls your autonomic nervous system and all of your muscles, nerves, actions and reactions, also controls your body language and your tone of voice. Professor Morabian of the University of California at Santa Barbara has concluded that when you communicate with others, fully 55% of the message you send is contained in your body language. 38% of the message you send is contained in your tone of voice, and only 7% of the message is contained in the actual words that you use. And your body language and tone of voice is largely controlled by messages about yourself and your goals that you've sent to your subconscious mind as the result of the way you think and feel. For example, when you've had a success of any kind, you send a charge of emotional energy to your subconscious mind that tells it that you're a winner. For some time afterwards, you walk and talk and act and think like a winner. Your step will be brisker, your voice will be stronger, your eyes will be more focused, and your body language will signify this belief about yourself. Your subconscious mind will accept your predominant emotional thoughts and organize your entire body, voice, and tone to fit a pattern consistent with it. The ninth law of success is the law of expectations. It's often called the law of the self-fulfilling prophecy. It's one of the most powerful of all laws because of its simplicity and its predictability. This law simply says that whatever you expect with confidence will have a tendency to materialize in your life. You get not what you want, but what you expect with the greatest intensity. For this reason, an attitude of positive self-expectancy seems to go hand in hand with great success in every area of your life. The wonderful thing about the law of expectations is that you have the power to manufacture your own expectations. You can decide to expect only good things to happen to you. 
you can walk and talk and act as though you believe the entire world was conspiring to help you to achieve your goals. You can become what W. Clement Stone often referred to as an inverse paranoid. You can become convinced that the entire world is conspiring to do you good. The way that you apply the law of expectations is by confidently looking for the good in every person and every situation. When you have a temporary setback, you can look into the setback for the valuable lesson that it might contain. Instead of becoming upset, you can say to yourself something like, I believe in the perfect outcome of every situation in my life. This kind of affirmation causes you to approach everything you do with a more positive and open and optimistic attitude. The most powerful of all expectations are the expectations you have of yourself. You should approach everything you do with an attitude of calm, confident self-expectancy. You should expect to be successful more times than you're unsuccessful, expect to win more times than you lose, and expect to eventually achieve your goals if you carry on long enough. The tenth law of success, which applies to many other areas of life, is called the law of concentration. It says that whatever you concentrate on and think about repeatedly with emotion tends to become more and more a part of your inner and outer life. Some of the most important work in psychology shows that if you dwell upon qualities that you wish to develop, like courage and sincerity and persistence, you tend to actually build those qualities brick by brick into your character and personality. The law of concentration goes hand in hand with the law of subconscious activity, and it largely explains the person that you are today. Whatever you've concentrated on in the past and are concentrating on in the present is having a major impact on your conduct and behavior. What you concentrate on largely determines the quality and quantity of the results that you get and the success that you enjoy. The eleventh law of success is the law of habit. It says that virtually everything that you do is automatic and unthinking. You are largely a creature of habit. It says that from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, you have a tendency to follow the path of least resistance and to do the things that you become accustomed to doing in the past. You eat the same foods for breakfast, you brush your teeth with the same toothpaste, you take the same route to work, you greet people with the same words, you go to lunch at the same time, you work in the same way, now, there's nothing wrong with establishing habits that enable you to simplify your life. In fact, your life becomes successful to the degree to which many of the things you once needed to concentrate on, such as driving a car, have become automatic and unthinking. When you make certain things habitual so they no longer require thought, your mind then becomes free to concentrate on other things that can be more helpful to you in achieving the things that you really want. There are several parts of the law of habit, and the first of these is that Good habits are hard to form, but easy to live with. The second part is that bad habits are easy to form, but hard to live with. One of the hardest of all things to change are bad habits which are counterproductive to the goals that you want to achieve. It's therefore important for you to sit down and think through the habits that you have and analyze them carefully. You need to decide whether or not they are moving you towards your goals or away from them. Remember, one of the most important of all observations on success is that everything you do either moves you in one direction or moves you in the other. Nothing is neutral. Everything counts. If a habit isn't helpful, it is hurtful. If a habit is not leading you to success, it's probably leading you to failure. The way that you overcome bad habits is simply to override them by the development of new, more positive habits. For example, if you have a golf swing that's causing your ball to go into the rough, you can override that habitual swing by taking lessons and learning how to hit the ball differently. If you have a habit of getting up later than you should, you can override that habit by repeatedly getting up earlier until that new behavior becomes the habit that dominates your thinking and your actions. By practicing the law of concentration in conjunction with the law of habit and thinking continually about how you would be with a new habit or behavior, you drive this message into your subconscious mind and you eventually begin to behave in a manner consistent with the new habits you wish to form. This brings us to the twelfth law, one of the most important of all the laws of success, and that is the law of attraction. 
The law of attraction says that you are a living magnet and that you inevitably attract into your life the people, events, and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. This is why we say that whatever you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis, you can have. Whatever thought you hold clearly and mix with emotion begins setting up a force field of mental energy that begins drawing towards you the things that you need to achieve that goal. This law of attraction has been written about for hundreds if not thousands of years. It's contained in the old folk sayings, like attracts like, or like begets like. Or you've perhaps heard, birds of a feather flock together. My friend Mark Victor Hansen says that whatever you want, wants you. These are all ways of saying that your mind is extremely powerful and that whatever you think, emotionalized, becomes a form of energy, like a magnet, that's attracting the events and circumstances you experience into your life. In music, the law of attraction is often referred to as the law of sympathetic resonance. It explains, for example, that if you have two pianos in a large room and you hit the key of C on one of the pianos and then walk across the room to the other piano, the C note or string on the second piano will be vibrating in perfect harmony or resonance with the C string on the first piano. One of the most common examples of this law is when you enter a room full of people and you almost invariably have a sympathetic resonance or attraction with someone else in the room. You'll have a tendency to gravitate toward a person with whom you are comfortable and compatible and that person will have a tendency to gravitate towards you. Very often, two single people at a social gathering will have a level of sympathetic resonance that draws them toward each other and into conversation. By the same token, when you have a very clear goal or idea, you will attend to attract people to you and be attracted to people who have ideas and information and resources that can help you to realize that goal. Another illustration of the law of attraction is its opposite, which is the law of repulsion. When you begin to become a particular kind of person, because of the way you change your thinking, you will find yourself attracted to people who are similar to you and you will also find yourself repelling and being repelled by people who don't think the way you do. This law explains why positive people tend to associate with other positive people and why negative people tend to associate with other negative people and why neither group finds the other group of very much interest. You can begin to fill your life with the kind of people that you respect and admire by simply becoming the kind of person in your thoughts that will attract them to you. The thirteenth law of success is the law of choice, which says that you are always free to choose the content of your conscious mind, but in so doing you are choosing every other part of your life. Your thoughts control your reality, and since no one else but you can think for you, the thoughts that you choose to harbor determine everything that happens in your life. The wonderful thing about the law of choice is that it says that you have complete freedom to think and therefore to be anything that you intensely desire. The choice is always up to you. The law of choice also says that you are where you are and what you are because you have chosen to be there. If you're not happy with where you are and what you are, it's up to you to choose to be and do something else. The fourteenth law of success is the law of optimism, which simply says that a positive mental attitude goes hand in hand with success and happiness in virtually every dimension of life. The quality of optimism is the quality that makes you into a cheerful and pleasant person, a person that other people like and want to be around and help. The most successful men and women tend to be very likable people. The more optimistic you are, the happier you'll be moment to moment and the more things you'll be willing to attempt. The fifteenth law of success, the law of change, says simply that change is inevitable. The only constant we have in life is that of change. Everything is changing, even as you listen to this tape. But the wonderful thing about the law of change is that nothing is fixed either. All progress requires change, and since change is happening in any case, you can be and have and do anything you want by simply harnessing the forces of change and taking advantage of them. The law of change also says that your life can only get better when you get better.
but not until. It says that you can't remain the same and somehow improve. The law says that if you don't take advantage of change, you will end up being the victim of change. Things will happen over which you have little or no control, and you'll simply have to go along and adjust your actions and behaviors to whatever occurs. Now, let me tell you a story that is true in more cases than not. Once upon a time, there was a young man from an average home with an average education, working at an average job, and who had an average group of friends. Like most average young men, he was primarily interested in girls and sports and television. He liked to have a good time, and he spent most of his money enjoying himself. He looked upon his job as a necessary evil that paid for his average lifestyle, and like most average people, he was going nowhere with his life. Then one day, something happened to him. Perhaps he read a book that woke him up, or listened to an audio program, or attended a motivational seminar. Whatever it was, he wasn't the same afterwards. He realized that he could choose to do and be something else. He applied the law of choice. By the law of change, he realized that his life could only improve if he began changing in a positive direction. Using the law of cause and effect, he made some decisions about what he wanted to accomplish and then began searching out the causes of the effects he desired. By the law of optimism, he was positive toward himself and his possibilities. He expected good things to happen, triggering the law of expectations. He went to work on his thinking and he began to dwell, the law of concentration, on his ideal lifestyle. By the law of subconscious activity, he began to walk and talk like the person he envisioned himself becoming. He also began noticing opportunities to advance himself that he hadn't seen before. As he changed his thinking, he triggered the law of mind and the law of mental equivalency, and he created a clear picture of his goals. By the law of correspondence, his outer world began to reflect his new, improved inner world. His beliefs about himself began to change, and by the law of attraction, people and resources began to appear to help him move toward his goal. As he concentrated on his desires, his values and motivations changed, and he began developing the kind of habits that lead to success. In no time at all, by bringing his life into alignment and harmony with the laws of success, he began moving forward at a rate that surprised even him. And so can you. The laws of success are based on the foundation principle that in order for you to succeed, you must first decide what success means to you. You can then begin to apply these laws to your definition of success to bring it more rapidly into your reality.